Hello everyone, this is Satish Kumar. I am here with another lesson for Indian economy and this is related to uh, RBI. This is about autonomy of RBI. Okay. See, in India, there is a uh, <clears throat> uh, difference of opinion between government of India and RBI regarding the autonomy of RBI. Okay. And the government and RBI are not at the same page regarding each other's role. Okay. And RBI says that at times their independence, that is their autonomy is being violated. But the government says that it is uh, the intervention that they are doing is for the concern for the economy and they are more responsible for the economy as they are the elected representatives. So they have to do this. So this is a conflict between RBA and government of India and this has been going for quite some time and at present it there is not a huge issue but this will quite often come again. Okay. In fact, uh, a few uh, last year when uh, RBI wa want, uh, government wanted the surplus of RBI, there was an issue. Okay. So, we need to know what are all the issues involved here. Okay. So, whether RBI has full autonomy or whether RBI is under the control of government, all these things you have to have an idea so that any questions that is asked related to this, it will be easy for you to answer. Okay. See, when the idea of RBA's autonomy, that is the central bank's autonomy was discussed no, or raised, no, this was raised some uh, two decades back, somewhere around 2000 like that. Uh, it was generally meant that functional independence, okay. uh, RBA is not going to have a full independence, autonomous, only functional independence. Okay. That is, the bank would be unconstrained in its functioning, for example, using the instruments, okay, what type of instruments that use and how it uses them. In these areas, it has, uh, it will have full functional independence, okay. That is what it was earlier discussed then. Uh, but there was also uh, uh, an, another area of uh, contention is that what the goals of the central bank should be, whether they should concern only with uh, inflation okay, or they should also uh, consider about the level of employment, the economy, overall economy. For the RB as to, whether RB has to concern only with targeting the inflation of the economy and the money supply and other things. No. RBI has to focus only on that or whether R RBI also have to uh, have concern on the overall economic condition like the employment and other things. Okay. So now this discussion went for some time and later on it was decided uh, around 2015 no, the function of RBI should be focused more on controlling inflation that is inflation targeting okay that is why the in 2015 there was this rb uh, the amendment and the law came into the, that modern monetary policy the monetary policy committee was set up and target was given and agreed between government and rbi that rbi has to focus on uh, inflation targeting okay so that is how it was decided but still quite often there are some issues arising between RBA and government. We need to know what are all the areas where RBA and government are having differences of opinion. Okay. So, there here are a few areas. One is the corrective action to be taken for stress banks. Okay. That is, RBA wants uh, if any bank is stressed. Okay. Uh, or any bank is not uh, properly functioning, no. RBI wants to have more powers to regulate, regulate this 
those public sector banks okay in fact it want to take corrective action for example it want to impose a prompt corrective it want to list those banks which are stressed to put under the prompt corrective action okay and this is not uh, liked by government because when rb put a bank under prompt corrective action it means that bank will have lot of restrictions and this will result in less credit creation in the economy and uh, government is concerned about that okay government at the most it don't want uh, rbi to put banks under the prompt corrective action so here there is a conflict between both of them okay then rbi also wants to issue prudential norms to be adopted by financial institutions whereas government want to relax those norms okay here again this is also related to the corrective actions of uh, banks in fact the third point is also easing of liquidity that is rbi uh, government wants to uh, lend more uh, banks to lend more so that there will be more clear credit creation in the economy rbi wants to be very prudent that is it wants to see whether the bank is not creating any stress assets like npas and other things okay naturally rbi being the regulator of banking no it wants to take control of bank that they don't go into trouble okay so here is a uh, conflict between both of them in this matter you could uh, simply write it in the simple matter that prompt correct action that is uh, correct action to be taken for stress banks here is a conflict between rbi and government of india then another is that is what happened uh, uh, last year uh, uh, one and a half years back right that is the sharing of the surplus generated by the rbi okay see rbi uh, finally rbi is uh, government is the owner of rbi okay and any profit that the rbi generates no uh, so that being a uh, uh, owner of rbi government uh, as the uh, right to 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 that profit okay uh, but rbi feels that government should not dictate them to how much of the surplus that they should uh, give to the government in fact rbi is giving some surplus but um, there was a disagreement last year arise in fact we will see what it is okay we will see all this two in detail that is the corrective action that is to be taken for stress banks what is the uh, difference of opinion between them okay first we will see the banking regulations see rb being the banking regulator it will be uh, uh, it uh, government trying to uh, ask the rb not to do that or interfering uh, in rbi banking regulation no will not be good in fact because of that there will be more npas created more bank will fail okay so rbi has to uh, regulate the bank okay so under no circumstances it would be advisable to lower prudential norm okay so the government is saying on the other hand it is concerned about the medium and small enterprises and when lot of banks are put under the prompt corrective action and the banks are lending less or lending with uh, only to few people and not lending at the uh, cheaper uh, rates no all these things of uh, that the regulation that the rbi takes no will affect the economy especially medium and small enterprises and when uh, the recent government that is the present modi government no when it wants to implement uh, new reforms new changes no uh, it wants the rb uh, banking sector also to support it okay so there is a concern uh, rbi wants to regulate banking government wants the bank to be uh, more uh, what to say easy going easing of lending liquidity liquidity and uh, uh, not uh, making all the ba banks to put under the prompt corrective action okay so the rbi says that 
if the government is so concerned about the uh, these things no what the government could do is they could provide interest rate subvention okay that is government could pay uh, this uh, uh, lesser rate the rate that is uh, the discounted rate that is given to the some sectors okay rather than forcing the rb to tweak its lending norms okay so here there is that, that kind of problem is there okay regarding banking relation see similarly the central banking regulating no uh, uh, this is also not brought any good to uh, uh, to the economic thing in fact between 2013 and 18 uh, because of the rbs uh, uh, over regulation or uh, regulation no there is a 5 percentage point swing in the real interest rate okay and it is uh, it made the lending rate uh, highest in the world okay and uh, some experts says that some economists say that this might have caused the slow industrial and export growth okay uh, so and this might also be the result of, uh, because of this slow industrial and export price there is a huge rise in npas and further rbi is putting lot of bank uh, under the prompt corrective action so uh, rbi is uh, over regulation could also mean some problem to institutions okay now we need to know how rbi makes the surplus okay see rbi earns by variety of method first it is investing on foreign currency by which it will earn some money then it is investing in bonds through which it earns some profit then it is investing to banks lending to banks no by which also it is earning some profit it is also will get commission for the work that it is doing to the government because rbi uh, does a lot of transactions of government no for everything it gets some commission so from that it gets some profit and finally synergy that is the difference of value of note printed and cost of the printing of distribution printing and distribution of rupee note okay so here is also some surplus for rbi that is also part of rbi's profit so these are all the rbi earnings rbi also incurs some expenses like printing of currency note and expenditure to staffs and it gives commission to banks on transaction so all this expenses uh, is less uh, uh, both the earnings and expenses are matched and finally rbi has surplus in fact R rbi functions at a uh, high uh, profit it is making surplus so what rb does with this surplus see the rb maintains a reserve of this profit to meet some unforeseen unforeseen event that is called black swan events okay and it only gives the balance to the government for example if rb makes certain amount of profit this year it is not going to give entire amount to the government it is giving only part and it retains part for itself okay so it gives the balance only surplus as reserved to the government so by maintaining some amount of surplus as profit no rbi was able to maintain a huge amount of reserves in its and that is why it had such a huge amount uh, one year two year back okay and the present government that the modi government no it saw that and it said that and please remember all over the world all central bank hold some amount of the surplus for the to maintain this kind of unforeseen events but 
Indian bank has maintained a lot of percentage when compared to the all other banks in the world. So our bank is maintaining a huge amount. So the present government led by Modi know it said that why are you holding such a huge amount and we want the excess money. Okay, that is how this trouble started. And RB said that we cannot compare our economy with other countries and these are all for meeting the black swan events that is some uh, unforeseen events we will we will see what it is black swan events okay so here comes the question of sharing of surplus and again this when this uh, problem came there was a discussion about whether government is interfering on rba's autonomy okay so what is a black swan event see it is an unpredictable event that is normally cannot be predicted okay it comes very suddenly and it is very severe also when it comes okay such a type of event and these black swan events no are characterized by very extreme rarity and severe impact on the economy so for example the 2008 crisis financial crisis when it came no nobody uh, predicted whether it is going to happen okay it came suddenly and it had far reaching impact on the world in the, such a situation the banks failed in usa because they were not expecting that okay but india was able to withstand that 2008 financial crisis how because in what india was able to indian uh, banking sector was functioning well indian core economic structure was so good so we are not affected by the 2008 financial crisis of course our economy also slowed down but we are not uh, affected very much so our rb says that since a black swan event that is an unpredictable event comes no we need some excess revenue in fact if you all remember when this happened one one and a half years back rb said that there may be some uh, black swan event this covid 19 could could be termed as a black swan event okay in fact at present both the rbi and government are trying very hard to uh, uh, overcome the current slow down in the economy to to revive the economy and all these things and the amount that the rbi gave one and a half years two years back to government no if rbi had those amount with them it could have been used in this kind of time okay so that is why rbi said that we are hoping holding the excess amount so uh, a black swan event in fact the coronavirus is creating as what the black swan events is doing it is creating great damage to the economy okay and uh, it is going to impact the market investment the gdp everything it is going to impact and for these kind of reasons only rbi said it is maintaining but uh, of course the government had the final say and it got the money the excess surplus okay please remember this point so now finally we come to the conclusion see there there cannot be complete autonomy to rbi okay there need to be some accountability at the same time rbi need to function freely without too much interference rbi also have to uh, for example regulate the bank to ensure that the banks do not fail bank to create too much of stress to such like npas okay so at the same time bank uh, rbi also have to uh, put into some account accountability so for example there are different models available in fact in usa the federal bank uh, of the usa no they will be uh, the federal reserve of the usa the central bank of usa 
they would be uh, um, giving their uh, pres presentation to the US Congress about themselves, how they are functioning. That gives some transparency. Okay. Um, so, rather than government intervening too much on the RBI, RBI could be asked to pub, uh, uh, publish report and what what kind of decisions it is taking to solve the issues like that, that could be. So, we could avoid that, uh, any blatant uh, political intervention and there is not unrestrained automatic to bank. So, banks also, uh, RBI also have some uh, transparency and uh, RBI do not have too much of political intervention. That kind of mechanism has to evolve. So, this is how you have to answer this question and it is a very important one. I do not know how current this is, but as a general studies, you have this in your mind. Okay, And I hope in recent times, there is some conflict between RBI and uh, government and it will arise in the future also because, because the economy is slowing down and uh, government want to improve. So, the government will ask RBI to do something. At some point of time, RBI will uh, question the uh, government so that there will be something like that. So, this question naturally becomes very important. Okay, So, prepare like this and keep an eye on any development regarding RBI and government regarding their autonomy issues. Okay. With this I end this lesson. Bye.